For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Leonard Sheik Thompson was the most hated man in the California Department of Corrections. His physical abilities were legendary, and his exploits were infamous. We were introduced to Sheik Thompson in the Manuel Mapa Lopez episode, which included a description of him by Aryan Brotherhood and Mexican Mafia associate Eddie Bunker in his autobiography, Education of a Felon. Today I will begin with a description of Sheik from James Carr's autobiography entitled Bad. For those of you that are not familiar with Mr. Carr, he was an early friend of George Jackson, and the two were in a gang called the Wolf Pack at DVI. This is how Carr described Sheik Thompson. Quote, Sheik was legendary. He was about 45 years old, 5 foot 6 and 165 pounds, and about as immovable as Alcatraz in a light breeze. He looked like the devil's father. He once fought a homosexual in Folsom with his fist for an, over an hour without ever stopping for breath. They fought from the kitchen all the way through the blocks and out into the yard. This homo bit Sheik all over his face and bit both his earlobes off so they went down to points. Then the cop shot Sheik in the side and both legs shot his balls off and still he didn't stop. He was on his knees pouring out blood and hitting the homo so hard that the cops were afraid to pull him off. When they took him to the hospital after he passed out from loss of blood, the doctor said he'd never walk again. And by the time I met him, the dude could run around a football field with a 100-pound sack of sand on his back. Sheik's original beef shows what kind of a guy he was. He was working for a fight promoter in Frisco as a trainer. And one night, he's coaching a boxer who was supposed to be throwing the fight. But once the kid got in there, he changed his mind and started winning. And in front of all the crowd, Sheik pulled out a gun out of his belt and shot the fighter. Besides being one crazy motherfucker, he was a rat and an informer. He'd, write, he'd rat on you right in front of your face. And if you didn't like that, he'd spit on you. And if you didn't like that, he'd beat you into hamburger. All this sounds incredible, but I assure you, it is based in fact, with a little extra jalapeno sauce mixed in for sure. But as we continue with Sheik's story, you will be able to judge for yourself if the descriptions were appropriate or not. Sheik was born on June 10, 1923 in Chicago, Illinois. Not much is known about his parents, but according to newspaper reports, he no longer had parents at around the age of 11. By 1942, Sheik had made his way to Tulsa, Oklahoma. In January of 1942, Detective Lee Harrell attempted to arrest Sheik at the S.H. Crest store. In an attempt to get away, Sheik stabbed Harrell and fled on foot, but was shot and captured a short distance away. On January the 17th, 1942, he unsuccessfully tried to escape from the local jail. On February the 2nd, he was convicted of assault with the intent to kill and sentenced to five years in state prison. Sheik was received at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary, located at McAllister, Oklahoma, on February the 9th, 1942. Biographical data in the prison record reveals that he had a ninth grade education, had been in Oklahoma only three months, his parents were deceased, he has been on his own since the age of 13, and fighting is listed as the cause of his downfall. At the bottom of the page, it inquires if the prisoner has served a prior prison term in Oklahoma. Sheik answers no. But a second question asks if the prisoner has served a prior term in another prison. Sheik answered with Missouri Reformatory. Apparently, he did some time in Missouri's juvenile system prior to his arrival in Oklahoma. Sheik's earliest release date was set as November the 2nd, 1944, and his latest release date was set as February the 8th, 1947. His disciplinary record documents five separate fights with four different prisoners and one incident of stealing cookies from the mess hall. Sheik would fight the rest of his life. While in prison, he registered for the draft on May 18, 1943. On the front of the registration card is written, Cancelled, Registered with Local Board, 92, San Francisco, California. That is because he registered for the draft in San Francisco, August 24, 1944, after he moved to California upon his release from Oklahoma custody. I noticed that this was earlier than the stated minimum turn. Had Sheik become working as an informant to win an early release? Maybe. As we can see in this registration card, he has adopted the moniker Sheik, even going as far as to include it in his signature. The name Sheik is derived from one of his aliases, Lawrence Sheikskon. His freedom did not last long, though. On August the 9th, 1945, Sheik and two crime partners robbed the municipal car barn 
located at McAllister Street and Masonic Avenue, making away with $4,000. He was arrested on August the 17th, 1945. Police found $1,200 and a shotgun in Sheik's room when he was detained. One of his crime partners turned state's evidence and testified for the prosecution in an attempt to receive probation versus state time. On November the 19th, 1945, he was convicted of first-degree robbery and sentenced to serve five to life in state prison on November the 22nd, 1945. As mentioned in previous videos, San Quentin was the state's only reception center during this time. New arrivals were documented in the prison logbook and assigned their prison number. Sheik was received at San Quentin on December the 1st, 1945, and he was assigned prison number A2705. On April the 22nd, 1949, Sheik was transferred to Folsom Prison. As in San Quentin, Folsom also maintained a prisoner logbook to keep track of arriving and departing convicts. The record reflects a transfer back to San Quentin in 1950. But why would this be? In September of 1950, there were two attempts on Sheik's life. On September the 17th, 1950, Harry Luckett from Alameda County attacked Sheik. The next attempt took place on September the 24th, 1950, when Manuel Mapa Lopez, future Mexican Mafia member, attacked Sheik with a 23-foot-long metal rod, knocking him unconscious. For his own safety, he was transferred back to San Quentin on November the 29th, 1950. In January 1952, Sheik was paroled and took up the profession of prize fighting. Unfortunately, prison had not eliminated his criminal behavior. On June the 25th, 1952, he committed an armed robbery against Stephen V, making off with personal property valued at $4,848. On June the 28th, 1952, he threatened musician Maurice Simon with a knife and robbed him of $15. On the same day, he robbed and shot a fellow boxer. This is the crime mentioned by Mr. Carr in his description of Sheik. Paul Pargo was a 26-year-old professional boxer weighing 175 pounds. Sheik had approached Pargo about fixing a fight scheduled to take place on June the 21st, 1950 at the famed Hollywood Legion Stadium. But Pargo declined to take part in the scheme. He went on to fight the 171-pound Walter Landry to a four-round draw. After Sheik robbed the musician Marie Simon on June the 28th, he went to Paul Pargo's home to confront him for refusing to take a dive. When he arrived, an argument ensued and Sheik pulled out a gun and threatened to kill Pargo. Pargo grabbed an 11-year-old boy to shield himself, but that did not deter Sheik. He fired twice, missing both of them on the first shot and grazing Pargo's neck with the second shot. Sheik was headed back to prison after only a short six months on Broadway. It wasn't long before the knives were out for Sheik. On September the 13th, 1955, Sheik was pushing a laundry cart down a corridor in Folsom Prison when he was attacked by three men who jumped from behind a door. Two of them had hook blade knives. Correction Officer Edward M. Burleson said he observed three men fighting in front of the education building. The two attackers started to run. Burleson said he ran after them and almost ran into Clifford Jefferson at the education building door. Sheik gave chase and caught the other attacker, William Carter, and began to beat him up, all the while bleeding from 14 stab wounds. The staff broke up the melee and locked up Jefferson and Carter and took Sheik to the hospital. The newspaper article noted that Sheik was a professional boxer and former light heavyweight champion of Folsom Prison. Before we continue, I must quickly discuss Clifford Jefferson. At the time of the attack on Sheik, Jefferson was serving a life sentence for second-degree murder out of Kern County. In 1949, he and some other men had participated together in armed robberies in Bakers, California. When one of those men, who happened to be Jefferson's brother-in-law, refused to participate any further, Jefferson pulled out a gun and shot him dead. The Sheik testified at the trial against Jefferson, and he was convicted. Since Jefferson was tried under Penal Code 4500, he was automatically sentenced to death. This is how he picked up his moniker, Death Row Jeff. He attempted two appeals and both were denied. Jefferson was only saved from the gas chamber when the governor stepped in and commuted his sentence to life in prison. He would go on to join and become an influential black guerrilla family leader, reaching the position of deputy commander-in-chief. He was also alleged to have been a leader in the Symbionese Liberation Army. 
Jefferson was thought to have so much clout over the SLA that when it kidnapped Patty Hearst in February 1974, law enforcement reached out to Jefferson to intercede on their and the family's behalf and encouraged the SLA to release Patty Hearst. On March the 24th, 1957, a legendary fight took place between Sheik, age 34, and Albert Johnson, a 37-year-old burglar from Los Angeles. The quarrel began on March the 23rd, 1957, when Sheik refused to pass the salt to Johnson during the evening meal. The men agreed to settle their differences in the morning. The fight took place between Tower Number 2 and Tower Number 3 in the exercise area adjacent to the cannery just a few minutes after the men were laid out onto the yard. The men were so focused on their deadly battle that they ignored several commands to stop fighting issued over the loudspeaker and multiple warning shots. Prison officials fearing that if they didn't stop the fight, it could spark a riot engulfing the rest of the comets on the yard, ordered the tower gunners to shoot the men. Sheik was shot in the leg and forearm, and Johnson was shot in the upper leg. Sheik managed to hobble 30 feet with a damaged ankle. Johnson also bit off pieces of Sheik's, of Sheik's ear during the fight. In March of 1965, Sheik was paroled to San Francisco. On the night of May 19, 1965, Sheik and a crime partner conducted a home invasion robbery at the 120 Belgrave Avenue home of Dr. Alex Riskin. The doctor's daughter-in-law was on the phone with her husband who was in Los Angeles when the two men broke in holding a gun and a knife, demanding narcotics. The husband heard the screams and then the line went dead. He quickly called San Francisco police and they arrived chasing the men out of the home. Additional officers were called out to help with the search for the robbers. Sheik attacked Officer Jaron with a knife when his hiding spot was discovered. His partner, Officer Clark, heard the struggle and came to his partner's aid, and they disarmed Sheik and took him into custody. Sheik complained of brutality, and judging by the picture, he did suffer some injuries, but you can't attack officers with a knife and, and expect to be treated with kid gloves. The judge threw out his complaint and admonished the U.S. Department of Justice for harassing the two officers. Judge Elkington said, In my more than 20 years in law enforcement, I have not seen a more vicious criminal. Sheik returned to prison sporting a life sentence. On the morning of April the 29th, 1969, Lloyd Kelly, better known as Coach Kelly, the supervisor of recreation at Folsom Prison, had a conversation in his office with Sheik Thompson and another inmate named Howard Cooper. Before the conversation terminated, Cooper left to go to the restroom after having noticed Kennedy beckoning outside the office. En route, Cooper asked Kennedy what he wanted. Kennedy replied that he did not want Cooper but was calling for the snitch inside, referring to Thompson. Cooper saw Kennedy holding an aluminum baseball bat behind him. Cooper also observed Beard standing near the coach's office and saw him in the same spot upon Cooper's return from the restroom. After the conversation between Coach Kelly and Sheik ended, Sheik went into an adjacent room called the Issue Room, in which athletic equipment was handed out. Less than a minute later, Kelly heard loud voices in the Issue Room. He looked out and saw Sheik in the room and Kennedy outside the room and heard Sheik say, What the heck's the matter with you? As the coach went into the Issue Room, he saw Kennedy pick up an aluminum baseball bat which was leaning against the exterior wall of the issue room and make a thrusting motion with the bat towards Sheik. Sheik at first tried to ward off the bat and then took hold of the opposite end. After Kennedy entered the issue room, Kelly attempted to grab the bat but was unsuccessful. Sheik managed to push Kennedy to a point where the bat was protruding out the door and hollered take the bat, apparently to someone outside. Beard stepped up as if to take the bat, but instead pushed it aside and shoved a knife into Sheik's chest. Beard and Kennedy then pushed Sheik over to a desk. Kennedy and Sheik still held the bat, but Sheik released it when Beard tried to stab him again. Beard stabbed Sheik twice, and Kennedy beat Sheik on the head with the bat and beat Thompson's leg with the bat until the bone was sticking out. Coach Kelly left to summon aid. And upon his return with two officers, he saw Beard and Kennedy going in the general direction of a guard post. Sheik was lying on the floor of the issue room, and near him were the bat and the knife. Sheik died a few minutes after being brought to a physician immediately after the alleged assault. The physician and the autopsy surgeon testified concerning Sheik's extensive injuries, including head wounds, a fractured leg, and stab wounds in the chest. According to the physician, the cause of death was stab wounds, which involved the heart and both lungs. A contributing factor 
was the possible concussion and fracture of both bones in one leg. The autopsy surgeon testified that the cause of death was stub stab wounds in both of the lungs. Beard and Kennedy were apprehended shortly after the incident. At the time of their apprehension, Beard was outside the issue room and Kennedy was in the prison recreation yard. The two men were examined for injuries. No injuries were found on Kennedy and Beard only had a superficial scratch on his knee. BGF members Buford Motormouth Beard and Robert Sterling Kennedy were believed to be carrying out a murder contract on Sheik issued by Clifford Death Row Jeff Jefferson, the same man that attacked Sheik in 1955. I guess that Death Row Jeff felt that he had stood at the edge of the river long enough and it was time to see the bodies of his enemies floating by. On May 2, 1969, Sheik Thompson was buried in Sacramento's Arlington Memorial Cemetery. Only a priest, Sheik's lawyer from the 1965 case and a newspaper reporter were present. This was the end of CDC's most hated man. Be careful out there, and for now, good night and God bless.